All right guys, so in the last video there, I didn't get the anti-lag switch in time. Now, I finally got it here. Uh, this is for rolling anti-lag. I'm gonna show you guys how to put it in the car, at least if you have an AM Infinity. It's actually pretty basic. It's just one ground that physically goes to the body and then one switch, or one power line going to the actual ECU, which again, is for the AM Infinity. So let me show you what I have here. Um, this is the momentary switch. I got this off Amazon. It came with two of them. There's another one actually in here for eight bucks. So I will, uh, here, let's see if I can show you this, guys this. Here's what you guys need if you want to go check it out. Um, this is two small little momentary switches off Amazon, eight bucks shipped to your house. Um, they're all in stock also. So this is exactly what you need. And it's tiny, it's perfect, it fits right into one of those little buttons that's on the super dash, so you can see I put a little gold dot there because I'm about to drill this out. The only thing you have to do is have to take care of some of the webbing in the back. Um, I have to get my Dremel out and make a little bit of room because it is a little bit fatter in the back, which is what you want. Uh, and it comes with the bolts and a lock washer also. So it comes with everything you need. So let's go ahead and start drilling this bad boy out. Oh, sorry, before I forget also, um, the covers that I just showed there, you can still buy these new from Toyota. So these little plastic covers there, uh, you can still buy these brand new. They're called a cover for traction, but 55538-14020. Uh, I got two of them. Uh, here's the one. I actually already had an extra one. And uh, where's the other one at? There. Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna put these off to the side. Another thing I got from Toyota, uh, because I'm upgrading the fuel system, they still sell the plastic lock washer in stock. Again, here's the part number for that if you guys are looking for it, 77144-14040. Uh, if you guys wanna get this, this was like 15 bucks, but all these tabs on mine were destroyed because I never had the proper tool, which I finally got that. This tool here, uh, it expands out so it fits around it perfectly, is to get these on and off. Uh, I never owned one of these, so I always used a hammer to get it off. I didn't even know these existed. Someone sent this or showed me this, so I bought this off Amazon. It's made by Lyle. Um, see here. Yep, fuel tank lock ring tool made by Lyle. It's like, I think this may have been more than that. Maybe it was 20 some bucks. I don't know, but it's worth it, even if I get one use out of it. Uh, because the last thing you want is one of these breaking, and then you're dicked because you can't get them off. All right, guys, so I've got the holes drilled, or hold drilled here. It's a little off center. I kind of eh, threw it a little bit. Uh, and I drummed it out the inside of it here, too. You guys can see there, I drummed it out somewhat. It's nothing perfect, uh, but it'll work because you won't be able to see it. But the outside looks good. And this will get covered anyways because it has a little lock ring around it. Uh, so next up, what I need to do is actually put the wires to it. So what I'm gonna do here is have these two wires. I actually am gonna solder it in. I don't have any connectors small enough to get onto these small prongs. So what I'm gonna do is actually use some solder, wrap the wire around this, solder it to it, um, and then that'll be it. This will be able to be removed, need be. Actually, before I do that though, I wanna see how much wire I need. So what I need to do is this, take off the old shift knob here first. I have to take out this panel because I have to get that out, which is easy to get to. You don't have to fully take out that panel, but your six P panel, I'm assuming, you guys are, for the most part, manuals. Uh, you're gonna have to pull this out, so if you're like me, you take that out, pull in the back first, pop up in that, pull in your e-brake, pull up on that, and that's still plugged in, I forgot about that. Cup holder is life, I forgot I, I had this cup holder made, and uh, it actually has an LED light in it, and the light still works. Uh, usually that doesn't work uh, when you replace the aftermarket shit, uh, but this one actually does, which is kind of nice. Oh, there's my sunglasses I've been looking for. All right, well, I think this is gonna be kind of easy for me. I think my ground's gonna be this bolt right there. Uh, and right there's where the switch is gonna go because I'm obviously gonna remove the traction control switch because my new BTI gauge will be here uh, and that'll take place for that. I don't need it anymore. So let's go ahead and pop this dash panel out and then pop that out. All right, guys, so I forgot. You gotta take off this top panel before you can pull this out and you'll most likely need to pull this out too, uh, back around the gauges. Uh, this only, I think, I believe it's five screws that holds this top piece on. That panel just pops out and so does this. Uh, you don't need to disconnect everything because we just need to get back to this. I can kind of get my hand back here, but you gotta pry these things off. So you gotta get a flap head back in there. Kind of sucky, kind of stupid, because once it's out, I don't really need the panel. I can just literally put my hand back up under there and pop the new piece in. Stupid easy, right? So all I gotta do is uh, pop this out, and then I'll show you guys. All right, guys, so there's the three wires coming off of the um, slip gauge, or not the slip gauge, the uh, slip sensor there. Uh, so what I need to do now is pry that out. Uh, it's a little off center right now, but I should just be able to pry it out, and we should be good. All right, guys, so I've got that panel up. We've got the uh, traction control switch moved out of the way. Now I need to uh, de-pin it. Uh, if you guys can see here, there's three wires. Um, so if we go down here, I can show you which wires they are, which are a little backwards on this because it shows, it's like, mine shows, uh, got a black, red, and blue, which it goes the whole way down there. You can see black, red, and blue. I've already de-pinned it, or I shouldn't say de-pinned it, but I already disconnected the connector here. What I need to do now is these are Deutsch connectors. I need to put this little rubber boot here 
and then I have a specialized snap-on tool uh, that allows me to deep pin these easily. It's this little guy here, uh, you just pull it up in there and they just pull out from the back. It's actually kind of easy. Uh, and then I need to repin the new connector um, for the traction, not traction control, for the anti-lag, which is down here. These are all uh, color-coded and numbered. Thank you, Jose from Kaiser Motorsports. Made this idiot-proof for me. Um, and you guys are probably wondering well, why you're removing traction control. I'm not, again, the new gauge will have this set up and it will go directly from the gauge in here. So this this setup's no longer needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Uh, this way the day I get it, I literally just have to press and plug everything in because I don't even have to wire anything. It's already pre-wired. All I gotta do is push the pins in and uh, it'll work. All right guys, so I've got a lot done here. I went ahead and put this dash panel back in. If you can see, I've got my little red button set up now. Um, yeah, pretty basic. Just. It's momentary, so what I'll do is, well, I'll show you more here. Just hold it down, and it should kick on. Hopefully it works. Uh, it had good reviews online. Uh, now I did the other wire here. Use my connector here. Well, these crimpers. Uh, it's specific for these Deutsch uh, connectors. Oh, excuse me, boys and girls. Good Lord. Now all I need to do is take this. Come on, baby. Slide in and hold on. I love that clicking noise. And uh, it's back together. Now the only thing I will have to do is test it. Uh, I gotta ask my tuner, uh, make sure everything is copacetic. If it is, then uh, we should make some bang bang skeet skeet noises uh, when going down the road and going down the highway. So that hopefully this will help with roll racing events coming up. Um, yeah, so let's get it all back together and uh, make sure she's good. All right, so I've got everything buttoned back up here. So let me go inside the car and show you here. Uh, what was done exactly. I've got everything back together already. I will say this man pulling these panels in and out for the most part is quite easy There's only five screws there. There's one small screw up here Most people have it removed and never put it back in I do just because and retentive and then this piece pops out there uh, And this pops out easily too, but all back together and that's it now some people probably wouldn't like the fact that It's bright red. I think it's so tiny and I like the fact I can see it if I am at night I can get reached down and I want it so it rests here because when I'm not driving or if I'm one-handing it My hands right here. All I gotta do is reach up kicks on now i know a lot of people have it on their cruise control stock i don't have one because this is a jdm steering wheel so i don't have that option uh some people said about the momentary switch here uh the one thing i don't like with tapping into the factory wiring harness is you're tapping into the factory wiring harness anything i can do not to tap into any of the factory wires i try to stay away from something like this if it doesn't work or i screw up the wires i don't care i'll just make new wires or whatever i don't like screwing with anything with the factory system i just it's a weird mental thing. It'll probably be fine, but who knows? So let's go ahead and start this bad boy up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead again and plug my keychain real quick. You know, go ahead and grab one of these in the store, guys. Function eats for them. Pure function on the other side. Go get it. Come on, get your boy. Help a brother out. With the fuel pump prime, fuel pump prime. <laughs> Alright, so I tried to go for a drive there. Um, one issue is the button's not working right now. It's not engaging. So I need to go inside the ECU. I just talked to Jose Valle of Kaizo Motorsports and he just kind of walked me through what I need to do to turn it on. I can always get a hold of John, but I know he's busy at this moment. Uh, I just want to kind of test it. I know he'll get back to me later tonight. It's just me being impatient. So let's go get the laptop, hook it up, and see if I can get this thing to engage. I should be able to see it click on and off uh, from inside the ECU so I know it's engaging and working. Alright guys, so back in the car here now, letting it warm up. One thing I'm noticing though, my IAT sensor here is going bananas no idea why not sure if it went bad um but it's not happy about something it just if i rev it here like you see how they go dips down and it goes my idol's a little flunky too because of obviously wondering which i guess it's based off that somewhat but yeah i mean something is not right something is off somewhere here uh it's not happy about something so not sure what that's all about but yeah so that's a new issue um, I'm assuming something's wrong with the IT sensor, but I've got the laptop hooked up here. I'm pretty sure I have uh, rolling anti lag set up. If it is set up correct, when I come back, I'm going to walk you guys through it and show you what I did uh, to get it set up and then walk you through it uh, and show you what I did. <laughs> Right, the value seemed good. That was around what 4,000 RPMs or so, uh, and it built like 6,000 psi boost, which is good enough for me. I'm happy with that. Now, the only other thing that's bothering me right now is my uh, 
My AT sensor seems to be working. I don't understand what, why is it being finicky? It's being a finicky bitch. Not sure why. All right guys, so I'm trying my best here. I do need to change some settings there. At around 4,500, 5,000 RPM, uh, I'm building around six, six and a half pounds of boost right now. Uh, so what I need to do is go back in the ECU here. I go back up to the wizard. Wizard, setup wizard. I need to go down to uh, launch anti lag. Uh, grab this, scroll down some, hit show advanced options. And what I'm going to do here is scroll down a little bit here. So, what I'm going to do is change these values here. I'm going to change this to 40. Enter. Oops. Negative 40. I'm going to change this one to negative 30 and so on and so forth. Work my way up. Negative 20. And then negative 10 here. All right. So if we click on this here, sorry guys, I'm in the car trying to do this. Uh, if you'd see there, if that's focusing, uh, you'll see that's just below, so I'm aiming roughly for around 15 PSI this time around. Uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I set this up. Now, John Kerr of JK Tuning did everything for the most part, guys. I, I, I'm not I'm not a tuner. I didn't do anything. Like you see here, he set up all the boost settings and stuff already in the car. I set where the proper launches were, etc. So all I did was went up here to the wizard. Okay, click wizard. Wizards again setup wizard now the first thing you're going to want to do is come down here where it says launch and anti-lag now you want to go ahead and do this right here i'll say rolling launch enable you want to go ahead and click it on like you'd see mine is next what you're going to want to do is go down here show advanced options the first one is the launch boost targets uh, that is for your regular launch control and then you'll see one below it which is your rolling launch now i personally this will be all zeroed out on yours okay guys you have your negative pressure here this is showing kpa so this is like three pounds that's like five pounds six pounds or no, sorry three pounds it's like seven pounds it's like 11 pounds 12 pounds i think and then this is like 14.7 or 15 pounds roughly um what you're showing is negative pressure negative pressure and you're slowly trimming it up to positive pressure uh and then you want it to trim off so if your target is say here which is around 15 psi which is where i have it um you want it to slowly trim up so you want it to build real fast real rapidly like boom 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 and then you can have it trail off like i did or what you could do is have it be real aggressive and just cut off right to that point depending how you want so i could do negative 40 uh, here and here, trim it down to 10 real rapidly and then hope it holds. Uh, I personally didn't want to do that. I, that's just me for right now. I can always adjust it as need be. Uh, but now that's set up. This is how mine is again. Uh, this is personal preference. And then what you're going to do is go into your input functions, go up to switches. And you're gonna to wanna to go down to the rolling anti-lag switch. Now in yours, this digital five right now will most likely say disabled. Go ahead and double click on this. Right here where it says digital five, yours will say disabled. Um, depending how your harness is set up, who set up your harness, this can be different. I had mine set up by Jose Valle at Kaizen Motorsports. So digital five is the output. Now you'll see here, I'm gonna make this zero. This should be right, hit enter. This is how your guys will look too, it'll be zeroed out like this. Now if I hit the button right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my rolling anti-leg switch button. If I hit the button, sorry, let me show you here, just the raw changes. If only the raw changes, this won't work. So what you need to do is go down in here where your digital five is, get rid of the zero, hit enter, and now you'll see that it's scaled. So now if I go and hold the momentary switch again, the rolling anti-leg switch, you'll see how the scale changes. And now it works. That's all you need to do if you have an AM Infinity, guys. Uh, it's worked for me so far. Again, I didn't set up, there's more to it in front of this, guys. So this is just how you're setting up the rolling anti leg. This is it, not the regular launch control, which is, goes in parts with this. Um, I'm gonna try and learn a little bit more here for you, but that's how you set it up. Uh, if it doesn't work, it should, period. Uh, that, that should be it. I would check your wiring first and foremost to make sure these are changing over your input functions. Uh, if you're not seeing any change here, either the raw or scaled, that means your wiring is wrong. So check that first and foremost. Uh, and then after that, make sure you have the values correct down here. I hope this video was helpful for today, guys. I don't want to do something like this because, let's be honest, it's probably one of the most searched things on YouTube is anti-lag, rolling anti-lag, two-step. It's probably one of the most searched things. Uh, I set this up because I planned on doing some roll racing events. Do not do this unless you absolutely have to. It is very, very, very hard on your motor. It is very hard on your drivetrain. 
you know, I see a lot of guys do it, even myself, I catch myself doing it all the time, I am 100% guilty of it. But anytime the motor could let go, the drivetrain could let go, and it's not cheap. Especially with rolling anti-lag, uh, you're not only just being hard on the motor, uh, but you're also being hard on the drivetrain. Because once you let go of that button, that car is taking off, and it is shocking your drivetrain, drive shaft, your uh, rear diff, your axles, your transmission itself, the clutch, everything is just going through a momentary shock, and it's, it's a lot on the parts. You better have that stuff built properly, or you're gonna be looking into some big cost items and some big problems. And guys, hopefully this was awesome and hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, I'll try and help you out. Shoot me on Facebook, uh, shoot me a message. Uh, if you do me a big favor, what helps me out the most, guys, is if you like and comment on this video. Also, go check out the merch. Got new hats, new shirts, I got hoodies, all sorts of cool stuff. Thank you guys very much for tuning in and I'll talk to you later. Peace! Yeah,